Hi, welcome back to Rawhammer. And in this episode, we're going to be painting something larger as I previously promised. And for those of you familiar with Tyranids, you would definitely have recognized the profile of a Trigon or Morlock. Absolutely awesome model by GW. This one's been built using both Trigon and Morlock parts. So we could say it's a Trilock or a Morgon. We'll go with Trilock, it sounds a bit cooler. Uh, it's had its standard base coat of white scar spray by Citadel and we're going to be painting it in the Leviathan scheme using predominantly contrasts and some dry brushing uh, to get it battle ready in quick order. If you've seen my previous videos that's how we work so we will start in just a moment. So to start with we're going to use contrast majors purple and this is going to go onto any part of the model that is not that armor-like carapace. So all around the body here, either side of these plates, down through the tail, underneath, and the head, mandibles, the arms as well. So let's jump in, shall we? Using a large shade brush, because it can pick up a lot of paint. We will start from the top down. And let's go for that head, shall we, and neck. So coming in there, a lot of paint for this one. Don't worry if you go over the edges slightly onto that bony carapace because the Leviathan purple that's going to go on later will just cover that up. There we go, so you don't have to rush this. Obviously this is meant to be a speed paint but we're not layering up here so you can be fairly speedy but just keeping sort of within the lines as much as you can. I'll just show you uh, part of one side. And as you've seen previously, this paint just runs into all those recesses, picking up those features already. And when we come to doing this rib cage in effect, again, not too precious. Don't worry if it pulls slightly in those recesses because that will create that shade that we're after and that separation between all these segments here. Be a little bit quicker here. Down there, just working it in. If it pulls a little bit too much, again, just drag it out slightly with the brush and just move that paint on. Keep it moving and you'll be in a good place. Okay, so now we've applied pretty much all of our Majors Purple. We're just gonna revisit the distensible jaw here and we're gonna do a little bit of blending. So getting some Majors Purple on the brush, we're just gonna come around the inside of this jaw here with, and just wet that there around about the gums and the same on this side. Here we go, from the top down, not covering the whole of that inside gum or gummy area, but just where it connects with the outside of, of the mandible there. And just make sure we filled in that bit there. So while that's wet, uh, we're going to add some, just give the brush a little bit of a wipe off there, off to the side, I grab some Volupus Pink. And this Volupus Pink is gonna make up the inside of this Desensible Draw here maybe a little bit more because you really want to, that to run and um, pick up all those high spots. So there we go. It may look like a lot, but as you spread this around, it'll just give that really nice um, sort of wet effect that you'd expect from the inside of a, a monster's mouth first stage of digestion and just blend that across there into that Majos purple and it's mm, not entirely perceptible but it is just a hint of detail that uh, makes the model look a little bit kind of cohered if you like. Um, we're going to do the same on the tongue because that is a big 
kind of, uh, again, wet, wetter part of this model. It's coming from the inside of the mouth, obviously. It's covered in all sort of corrosive substances and it's going to look like it's just come from the depths of its insides. Uh, however you want to think about it, but this is definitely wanting the Volupus pink and not so much the Magus purple. I'm just going to take that to the edge there. that tip which is going to have it's a pretty much a claw so when we come to doing the claw picking up the claws later they're all going to be black templar or another color of your choice i prefer black templar because it's just the uh, kind of standard i've been using and there is the inside of the mouth and once we pick up some of those high spots a little bit later with the white scar it'll stand out even more vividly all right, now we're going to dry brush the areas of the model that has the Matros purple on, predominantly where the light is going to hit. So we'll take our white scar layer paint and a large-ish dry brush, get some on there. And as you know, with dry brushing, we get rid of most of the paint. Check it on the back of your thumb to see how much is on there. A light amount is good. Coming in anywhere on the model, just to test it out. Lightly apply it. Same direction each time, because the light's coming down from above. And just add a little bit more pressure as you work out how much paint is coming off there. Good, you can already see that starting to lighten up and pick up those raised areas. Same method as we used on the zoanthropes in the previous video. Okay, once you've worked out how much pressure you can apply, you can start to add a little bit more there until, yep, the model starts to pop as they say. So you can see there what we're trying to achieve. So you're gonna go across the majority of this model, picking up those high spots, tops of these shoulders here and the arms, grabbing all that detail. And Remember that we don't have to go too crazy in those hidden spots because you'll see the model from that angle most of the time. So again, from here, you probably want to pick up this top area there. You can use a smaller brush if needed. Okay, so let's just see what we've done there. We've added that white scar dry brush to all of those raised parts. We've even put a little bit in the mouth uh, just to accentuate that distensible jaw. Okay, right, everyone's favorite part now, the carapace. So with our contrast Leviathan purple, two hands every time, as bad as null oil for wanting to leap out and uh, flood your craft board. Let's take a good amount of that and we're going to just cover the whole of the carapace. Starting from the top, again not too precious, just get that paint on there. And this is when it really starts to look like it's part of the Leviathan fleet. Very satisfying, huge model. Can need quite a bit of paint. Don't try and be too sparing with this because you need it to run into all those recesses um, and if you do use uh, not enough then you can start to pull that thin already drying paint off so just keep that wet paint moving be 
happy with how it is as it lays and then move on to the next part. Welcome back. So here we have our Leviathan purple applied to all of the carapace areas. Of course, there's uh, some on the back of the claws here too, need to be picked up. Speaking of which, let's jump in and finish those claws off with some Black Templar Contrast, a well-used Black Templar Contrast. Barely any left, but enough to get through this model, I would say. And you can load the brush up. And just without being too precious, because the Leviathan Purple merges into Black Templar quite readily, just layer it on underneath. Just change the angles a bit there. You might need a smaller brush for some of these parts. The point is, just get that on there. Grab a bit more. Move that model around. And easy. You can put some Mephiston red underneath, just gone over there, but I'm not worried about that, you won't see it, and blend the two to give it that sort of organic look, like there's, it's part flesh, part chitin, um, but we're going to use a Mephiston red highlight on this, just to give it that look but it means that we don't have to mess around too much with different paints trying to get that uh the effect we're after but if you've got a little bit more time have a go works really well that's what i used on my maliceptors okay so get the idea i will go around and do the rest of the claws including the tiny ones or the smaller ones, they wouldn't be tidy because this beast is a few meters above you, um, as well as the uh, pincer on the tail. And I'll be back in just a moment. Right, we're getting there. That's the claws blacked in. Like I've said before, this is not meant to be uh, a perfect, pristine job. It's more of what you'd call a slap chop to get that paint on, get it on the table as quick as possible. So there will be some small white spots, but you can always come back in between gaming sessions and touch those parts up. Um, everyone's favorite bit now, the highlighting of the carapace. So this is what really brings it up to uh, a decent standard. So Leviathan, excuse me, Jeans Dealer Purple layer, and we'll just get that most of it gone. Have a largish dry brush, and let's start somewhere relatively inconspicuous to see how we are with the amount of paint down here. I'd say and it's just. Raise that on there. As you can see, that's starting to pick up the edges of those plates. And that is pretty much what we're looking for all over. As with the zoanthropes in the last video, you can lighten the plates by just dragging it sideways slightly. And that just adds a little bit, a little bit more texture and depth but that is more than sufficient to for what we want. Just bring it up to those larger plates on the back there. Starting to get a little bit lower on paint now. Add a little bit more pressure. And where you see these features, these little indentations, maybe just drag it sideways slightly. And that's probably where you want to be going sideways 
to pick up all those little recesses and the cracks in the uh, armour plating. Just do a little bit on the head a minute so we can see how that's going to look. That is just what we're looking for. Nice. Let's bring up the edges of those plates and all the high spots, all the recesses. All right, so you can see where we've highlighted the carapace all over. Again, it is a substitute for the pure form of edge highlighting, which takes a long, long time and accuracy, but this will give you a reasonable effect uh, in short order. What we're going to do now is highlight the claws using the fist on red base and dry brush. So we're going to take a little bit of this and the effect is that we're looking for a combination of looking like it's flesh pushing through from underneath and also that these claws have seen blood. So let's just test that. Have a look, somewhere innocuous perhaps, and just touch along the edge there. Claw, that is nice. Nothing wrong with that at all. And obviously you just wanna be super light with this. Don't want to overdo it. Just want a hint of that red coming through. You see the box art for uh, maybe the Malaceptor, some of the pro jobs, and uh, they've got those reddish tints coming through on the both the carapace and the claws. So if you can just see there, that's sort of what we're looking for all over. Just a nice little touch, not too much effort. And that gives a really nice effect in just a few seconds on each of those claws. We don't do much detail uh, with these speed painting techniques, but this one is so quick and easy. Not to be missed, is it? Right, so there we can see where we've added the red highlight, the fist on red highlight to all the claws and the tail pincer. It is very subtle, but from a distance, it just gives it a little bit of interest and isn't too much effort in terms of uh, a speed paint job. Um, we're gonna finish now by using some uh, white scar layer that is just one-to-one -one mixed with water, just mixed in a wet palette off the uh, screen. And we're just gonna touch the teeth up just to bring those back into focus because they are a key kind of highlight of Tyranid monsters, especially large spiky teeth. Very, very easy, little touch up. And down, just grab a little bit more there. Down the distensible more. Don't have to be super accurate. As long as just bringing them back into focus. Doesn't take much. And that's pretty easy. Mustn't forget the top ones. Let's make sure we've got a point on that brush. And here we go. Just a touch each of those. And get rid of that Majos purple. Um, you could even graze across it like a dry brush effect. Those smaller teeth, just bring them into resolution. So 
that is our Trigon or Morlock complete. Speed paint, white base, contrast paints, a bit of dry brushing, and that is good to go. I think probably the only thing I would do in addition is wipe the eyes back in with some white scar and put some Eandon yellow in there, but I'll do that at a later date. That is good enough to go. Uh, onto the tabletop, I'd say that was about already. Thanks for watching. Leave comments below and like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. And I'll see you in the next one.